Hi everyone. Uh, I thought it would be quite interesting to do a little video where I'm going to show how I do the editing for uh, Pluralsight courses. So this is some work I'm doing at the moment for an upcoming course about implementing cross-cutting concerns in ASP.NET Core microservices. Um, and this will be the first clip of the first main module. So it's called module two because uh, the, the sort of trailer for the course is always named, numbered module one. But this is the first one where I'm going to introduce the course and, and cover the topics. And I just thought it would be interesting to show what that editing process looks like. Now, I've done a lot of work prior to this point. So before I can record anything, I start outlining the course and what I want to cover. I start thinking about what demos I'm going to need. And typically, I start doing some research and scripting at that point. Um, this just gives me a bit of a sort of uh, bone structure for the uh, course that will be produced. Then I go in and produce all of the actual demos. So I actually work out how I'm going to show things in what order and what that code needs to look like and actually write the code. Then I go back and uh, write scripts for all of that. So, so that I can be very concise and clear when I'm speaking, um, rather than talking it through as I'm doing it, I go back and script uh, as to what I've shown on screen. I also need to design all of the slides, which I've done in advance. Um, so this is all of the kind of informational stuff that I'm going to cover. Um, and all of those slides to illustrate what I'm going to speak about and I script around those as well. Um, at this point then I've got sort of all of the outline of what I want to cover plus the script. I've recorded the video files so the actual demos taking place and then I go and do an entire audio recording session that usually lasts an hour or two and it's the end-to-end -end recording for the entire module. I do it in one go so that my voice sounds consistent across all of the clips um, and it's very easy to sound good in a Pluralsight course because that content is going to be heavy, heavily edited, which I've already done uh, for this module. So that means removing all of the mistakes and choosing you know, the best descriptions. I'll repeat things over and over until I'm happy with how it sounds. I don't stop the recording as I'm doing that. I just keep doing it. So then I end up with a recording with all those errors and all those kind of um, different phrasings of things. And then I can go back in and, and select the ones I want during editing. Um, and post-processing of the audio, which I've now done. So now I have all of the kind of raw materials to build the final clip. So the first thing I'm going to do inside Camtasia, which is the, the software I use for editing, um, screen recording and then, and then final editing. It's quite a, a nice tool. It's, you know, it's not as rich as maybe like advanced video editing tools, but for this kind of editing of screen recordings and Pluralsight content, it's perfect. So the first thing I'm going to put in is I've got a one second placeholder here, which is uh, a, a clip that don't worry about what it shows on screen that will disappear because we're going to overlay on top of that in a minute but every Pluralsight recording needs to begin and end with a one second uh, silence so that the clips can be neatly um, aligned when they're in the actual video player tool so I just put that in uh, so that I've got this placeholder and I'm going to need two of these so I'm just going to bring in the second one and I'll drop it in on the end in a moment um, then I need some media so I'm going to import media uh, from my course and inside here I have my module 2 folder and I've already exported all of the clips for this module so I'm going to bring in clip number one that's going to enter into the timeline so we're just going to oops, uh, zoom in a bit and it's a bit finickety when you've got small clips like this but I'm just going to drag this slowly there we go slowly to the end of the clip cool so that's all my audio so you can see we've got about a, a, a Three minute 37 runtime there. The next thing I'm going to need then is my media that represents my slide recording and I've recorded that and I've recorded the slides separately to all of my other videos. So the way I do this is basically just screen record me playing through the presentation and clicking through with short gaps between everything that happens and now I've ended up with uh, this um, piece of uh, video. Now this actually, I know, includes audio. It picked up the audio while I was recording this, so I don't want that audio. I don't want that at all. I've got my, my clear voice audio here. And then basically this includes all of my, my slides. Now I just want to find the end of these, which I know ends here with, let's get started. So I'm going to cut there, and then that's the content for this, this particular clip. Now the next piece is a little larger. So what I'm going to do is basically where these little blue arrows are and... Um, and where the transitions are, I see you don't have a blue arrow for here, but wherever something new pops into the screen, I'm just going to cut the clip basically. So make a slice here. Um, it's a little arduous and it's, you know, it's not super fun. But what this allows me to do is in a few minutes when I start, um, you know, finishing up this edit, I can now just align the video 
and what's happened on the screen to precisely where I talk about that in the audio. And the nice thing about that is it makes it very uh, clear for people that are listening to it that you know everything's aligned. Um, and it doesn't. It means I don't have to like try and record the audio and the video. Oops, I've taken too much of that clip there. What I want is uh, so I want to take that slice and then I want that slice there. Cool. Uh, so there's just keyboard shortcuts I'm using for this. Um, in this case, I'm just using the S key to slice uh, this clip. One thing that I, always annoys me is it loses focus after the slice. So I've clipped, I've sliced, and now when I've dragged it, I'm going to have to go back in and uh, kind of place that, um, place the cursor on this uh, there so that I can do the click, but never mind. So as you can see, this, this is kind of a slide heavy module because it's the introduction. So it's just a little bit more uh, finickety than some of the others. Uh, most of the courses, you know, I try and focus on practical demos when I, wherever I can, uh, because I think those are kind of easier to follow along with and, and, and better from a, a learning perspective. So in those cases, yeah, it's, it's, it's a different kind of editing because I still have to align what I'm saying to what's shown on screen, but there's less of this kind of cutting up as I go. Uh, right, so now I've got my first piece of clip here and hopefully my recording will pick up the audio. Um, we'll, we'll kind of cut this up a little bit. I might speed up a few sections because you don't need to see the, the whole thing. But basically what I'm going to do here is I'm going to play my audio and work out where I need my transition. So this is always painful as I listen to my own voice. Now I know that this is actually running a little long, so what I'm going to do is just take out that that section of audio there. Um, so that's where I want to um, begin with my slide there. So you can see, yeah, I try not to have too much blank space. This first slide is an intro, so it's kind of okay, um, but that's quite a long gap of just me talking. But for most of the course, yeah, I'll try and focus on having something happening as well as speaking. So we're back. Let's go straight into this first module. So you can see I'm just now going to stop the audio at points where I know I'm going to be module, talking about things. And you know, I don't want to listen to everything. Uh, so typically I know most of these Welcome. these uh, little gaps that you can see in the audio where there's a silent. Uh, give me the hint. Oh, that's. I know it's right. Um, and then you can see there at the end of a gap is probably where I'm going to transition into the next line. So as long as those those align with what I'm showing on screen, I'm all happy. Uh, so let's do this one here. Yep. Uh, so I'll do this for a few more, and then maybe we'll we'll kind of cut the video there. So let's bring these ones over. You can see it's once you get going, it's it's not too bad a, a process. Um, it's just about figuring out where things transition and you know pulling these clips in. So I'm going to do that. Now I'm going to introduce uh, Roland's course, the introduction course for. Uh, oh, actually, not Roland's course. This one's um, Eric's course about logging. So let's make sure that sounds. Yep, that aligns. So in a minute, I'll be showing uh, Roland's course, which is the first part of the series. So that's the Globo Ticket intro. Now that here, I can see that I've got a I've got a gap there where I might want some more material, so I may go in and design an additional slide um, and add that in in a moment when I'm doing my sort of QA pass on this. But for now, let's just treat this as if this continues on. Here's my jazzy diagram that just describes how the app looks. And then we can just, there we go, there's there's Roland's course. So this is the course that's just come out. One of two courses already released. Then what I'm gonna do is just keep dragging these in. So we've got prerequisites, the fact that people probably need a bit of C-sharp knowledge. Now 
I think that, whoops, what I want to do is move that over here, but, so I think this will just, there we go, so that comes in there. So what I did here is I recorded two variants of audio um, because I wasn't sure how I'm going to split the demo clips up yet. Now, my assumption after doing some more work on this is that I'm not going to have a clip per or, or a demo file necessarily per different clips. It's just going to be one per module. So now I can use the appropriate uh, the appropriate audio there. So when I'm not sure, I, I will record extra audio. So actually, this comes in here. Around this point, let's make sure that aligns pops in. So that's going to come in there, I think. I'll be using BBC yep. So this is the final I'm very excited to teach you about implementing final clip. Um, so what I'm going to do is just move this. Now I've cut some audio out. I just need to move my final silence along. Um, and now what we're going to do is we need to extend these clips because obviously I've got these gaps. And so I can hold down Alt in um, Camtasia here and then drag. And that basically extends the last frame of that particular clip. So now I've got this nice solid clip. So this again, I really wish there was a shortcut button or a way of like building a macro or something maybe there is but where I could just say you know do this for all clips because I just really want all these gaps filled with the, the, the drag of the last frame from the clip before it um, so you know this is a little little dull um, again over time these are these are the sort of approaches I've, I've found work for me and my process I was doing this uh, originally I, w I didn't know that there was a shortcut key I could do to drag this so I actually had to click on each clip and then tell it to extend the frame manually for a, for a menu. So um, that's that was definitely much slower than what I'm doing now. So I've, I've dramatically reduced time um, as I learn these tricks. And that's kind of the, the same for all tools, I guess. You know, as you learn the shortcuts, as you learn um, what you need to do, it's, it gets easier and easier. So now I've got my clips prepared. The last thing I know I need down here is I'm going to, I need the URL for so I'm going to bring in here, I've got a library uh, piece where I can add in the animation that includes my .NET URL. Oops, and I've accidentally, rather than placing it where I wanted it, I actually replaced the clip. So that's where I want it on top of here. And I just want to make sure that this lines to about here maybe. Maybe from... Okay, so I definitely need this to end prior to here. So maybe we'll put that there. Um, and I think, and I'm not 100% sure, but it just looks like this has got itself out of alignment slightly. So I just want to drag that down there we go. So let's just see how that plays out now. There we go. So that's that. That's there. Now, uh, what I will do is just I usually have a full pass through of the, the audio and video. Hello, so um, playing it through, listening for any you know errors, any additional pieces of audio that I've left in as alternatives that I didn't take out um, and, and watching it through. So I'm not going to force you to watch all of this. You can you know, obviously go and check out the course when it's released to see how it works. But here you can see how these now align nicely. You can see, so the audio now, um, you know, comes in at the same time as the video that I'm talking about. So that's quite nice. So that's that's it for this this particular clip. So I'm going to save that there. Here's my folder. So I've already got clips for my demo videos, which are sort of just raw screen recordings of those demos, and then edited down. But the ones that are slides only, I come in and do at this stage. So now I have clip one done, and uh, later on, once I've gone through this a little bit more carefully and done a couple of QA passes on it to make sure there's no errors, I'll export this as a final um, exported video file that I can then upload through the Pluralsight platform. So that's pretty much it. Um, hopefully this was interesting. Hopefully people kind of uh, like this kind of sort of behind the scenes, I guess. 
Um, if you are planning to do any kind of uh, video content for YouTube or you know, if you're looking to, to get into authoring for somewhere like Pluralsight, um, the, you know, this Camtasia tool is, is very good, it's very useful. I use different tools for doing the audio, um, which are a bit more expensive. I've invested a little bit more money in those additional tools. Um, but you can start with um, you know, uh, mostly free tools if you want to, to do a lot of this stuff. Um, I just found that you know these paid products do tend to give me the the return on investment in terms of you know they're easy to use they they work consistently um, that kind of thing. So this course um, hopefully will be out by the the end of November 2020. Um, I'm working on it now. I may actually have it out a bit earlier. It, it's kind of going quite well so far. So if if all goes to plan, maybe I'll have it out um, in the early part of November rather than the end. Um, we'll see. But I've got a lot more editing and, and work to do. Um, in the meantime, if you want to check out um, what I'm doing, uh, you can always uh, go onto the Pluralsight site here. And if you see that you go into my author profile, you can uh, click here to get notifications uh, when new courses come out. So if you're interested in just getting a notification when this comes out, uh, you can go and do that. And obviously, if you want to follow me on Twitter, at Steve J. Gordon, I'll keep everyone posted on how the course is coming along. Um, so that's it from me. Uh, thanks very much for watching and I will see you all next time.